Hey YouTube, Wes here checking in from the new house. This is actually the first video I am filming in the new house or shooting here in the new house. Uh, not sure what order things are gonna be uploaded in. I may do have some vinyl inboxes up before this video comes out. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, this is the new house. This is uh, what will be the actually be the guest bedroom, uh, but it's also gonna house some of our stuff as well. But uh, there'll also be a bed in here for uh, visitors to use, which will be nice nice to have. Uh, that's a nice thing about having a four bedroom house is we just have this extra bedroom that we can do, uh, we can use as a guest bedroom and still have our own sort of separate rooms for our collections and our, our main bedroom for sleeping in. Uh, so yeah, really nice place here. Uh, enjoying it getting settled in really nicely. So yeah, that's what this video is kind of about. This video is about uh, something I alluded to in my saying goodbye to the Midtown house, sort of the videos coming soon. I had 1600 records stored in this garage the entire time we were here and they were stacked up along this wall here underneath this this shelf here. The last video the wrap up the tour of the old house that we were renting before this this house we purchased and uh, I when I was in the garage I talked about uh, uh, several boxes of records that I had stored in the garage uh, for the entire three years we were at that house and a uh, little over a year uh, in the garage at the prior house that we were renting in the Duck Pond area. Uh, these were records that uh, when we initially thought we were gonna have to move out of the Duck Pond house, I started sort of boxing up a, a lot of records I'd purchased from uh, flea markets, uh, thrift stores, garage sales, a lot of those kind of things that I bought in large quantities but just hadn't had the chance to get to, to clean up, to give a listen to, to put through my listening process. So these are a lot of the records I purchased prior to 20, February 2015 is around when these were boxed up. Um, so if you've subscribed to the channel since then, all these records are going to be stuff you haven't seen before. Uh, but this is also kind of an experiment to see how these records fared because as I said, they were stored in a humid garage or two humid garages in Florida. Um, they were out of direct sunlight. They were out of the rain. They were somewhat temperature controlled, even though they weren't technically temperature controlled. They were um, in places where they didn't get extremely hot or extremely cold. They may have gotten down into freezing area, just below freezing at some points. Um, probably not even that, that cold. Uh, because you know, in Florida here, we occasionally get down in the 20s at night uh, in the winter time, uh, but it usually doesn't get any colder than that. Um, and in the summertime, we have you know outside temperatures that can, uh, with the heat index, can be well over 110, up close to 120. But just actual temperature is going to be sort of in the the upper 90s, um, 98, 99 kind of area. But yeah, well, instead of just rambling on, I wanted to sort of uh, see how these records fared. I don't see any signs of any bug activity as far as bugs getting to them. I did tape all of the seams on the boxes. Maybe I can flip this up and you can see this. All these all these seams are taped solid. Uh, no, no sort of entry points for bugs or anything. Uh, but I'm kind of curious uh, whether they got moldy, whether anything else happened to them, whether the humidity did anything to them. So yeah, let's go ahead and unbox these and I'm going to show them off as I unbox them. And uh, if, as I said, if you've subscribed to the channel since February of 2015, you likely have not seen these records because unless you have gone back and watched my old videos prior to then. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and this is box one. Let's, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to get. These could be all ruined. It's possible they're all moldy. I don't think so, uh, but any anything's possible. As I said, it, uh, I, I know I took a risk when I did this as far as storage, but I didn't have a whole lot of choice in the matter. Um, it is what it is. Um, so here we go. Okay. Well. Wow. Okay, <laughs> this is amusing because there's something on top of here that I've been talking about a lot recently that I didn't think I had. 
there, there's stuff in these boxes that I just don't know what I have. So uh, yeah, it looks very good for an initial initial look here. And I'll tilt this forward and maybe you can see that. I don't know if it's gonna be in focus, uh, but yeah, that's that's a now that I, now that's what I call music three. Um, yeah. So apparently I picked this up somewhere along the way. It looks like I picked it up at the Friends of the Library sale and yeah, it looks, looks fine, perfectly fine. No mold, no kind of weird warping or moisture or anything. Just looks like a normal used record. So let's go ahead and go through what's in this box and uh, enjoy the show. And I'll sort of relive this myself because, like I said, I've forgotten a lot of what I bought. And I know I've bought things again over and over again because I've forgotten what I had. Uh, I sort of remember this, the, the Cobbers, some sort of Australian band. Kind of neat there. Ian Matthews, if you saw my two eyes, or if you saw through my eyes. I think this is a vertigo pressing. I think that's why I have this. It's a, it's a vertigo swirl. Probably my only vertigo swirl because I don't have a lot of those, a lot of those expensive records like that, but always cool to have one. There's an ECM release. There's going to be a lot of ECMs in here in these boxes because early on in my uh, vinyl uh, VC sort of experience collecting records, again getting serious about it, I picked up a lot of ECM because that's what was what was being talked about a lot in the VC. So every time I saw one, I picked it up. So here is uh, Ralph Towner and Gary Burton with Matchbook on ECM. Um, here is a Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab copy of Earl Clue's Finger Paintings. Uh, yeah, Robert Fripp live album here. Very cool. Um, a Folkways record, Hoot Nanny at Carnegie Hall. And I think I have rebought this <laughs> again in the last uh, four years. So I probably have two of these now. Single for Kim Wilde's You Keep Me Hanging On. Uh, Frank Zappa's Joe's Garage Acts 2 and 3. Nice copy of Rolling Stone's Let It Bleed, Still in Shrink. Uh, copy of Rolling Stone's Big Hits on mono, or in mono. Uh, Salt and Peppa 12 inch single to Tramp and Push It. Nice copy of Queen's News of the World. Talking Heads, this is uh, songs about buildings and something, I forget the title of this one, but yeah, that's that one. A uh, copy of Devo's Freedom of Choice. Uh, I got Super Tramp, even in the quietest moments. 12 inch single to Anytime, Any Place by Janet Jackson. Jethro Tull's Heavy Horses. Soundtrack to On Her Majesty's Secret Service, James Bond film. Uh, ABC's The Lexicon of Love. I know I have multiple copies of that. Uh, Keith Jarrett's In the Light. Uh, Judy Collins, True Stories and Other Dreams. Uh, the Barbara Streisand album. So somehow I wound up with a Barbara Streisand even though I tried to avoid buying those, but I don't know how I got that one. Might have been in a collection I bought or something. Uh, James Gang Rides Again. Brewer in Shipley, down in LA. Ramatam, of course, cool album. I have, I have multiple copies of this just because I buy it when I see it for a good price. Um, it's a good one to put in the Discog store. Uh, Re Return to Forever, Romantic Warrior, of course, another one I have multiples of. Uh, these are a couple of Discogs purchases, actually. I do remember buying these. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince uh, Home Base. And DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and In This Corner. Uh, 
Simon and Garfunkel's Wednesday Morning 3 a.m. Jerry Lee Lewis Original Golden Hits Volume 3. Jethro Tull's Aqualung. These do have a slight bit of mold on them, but it's very it's very light and it will wipe right off. There's no real serious amount of mold, just a very light dusting. I will say that. Um, Into Battle with the Art of Noise. Uh, there's a good one. The Goonies original soundtrack. Cindy Lauper's Goonies are good enough. Uh, that's another one I think I bought on Discogs. I don't think I found that in the wild. Those those are pretty tricky to find. Uh, Ode to Billy Joe soundtrack. Thompson Twins in the Name of Love. Yeah, it's weird. Some of these have a very light dusting of mold, and some of them have nothing at all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe them all down before I put them on the shelf back here. Uh, Keith Jarrett and Jan Garbarek album Luminescence. Music for string orchestra and saxophone. A classic Boston album. Self-titled uh, Bebop Deluxe's Sunburst Finish. Giants of Jazz, Billie Holiday. Do see these from time to time in stores, but uh, this is the only one I have, I think, is the Billie Holiday one. I think that was some BCLT from somebody. I don't remember. It's been so long that I don't remember who that came from. Uh, Julia Fordham, self-titled. There's a classic one. Best of the Doors, 2LP set. Some of this stuff you would have to pay a good bit of money for these days. Uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Between Nothingness and Eternity. Classic one from them. Uh, Ramsey Lewis, Back to the Roots. Isaac Hayes, Joy. Uh, John McLaughlin, Devotion. Rolling Stones, Sucking in the 70s. I actually looked at a copy of this at Goodwill this past weekend. Didn't buy it, because it was in rough shape. Flock of Seagulls with Listen. Genesis, Three Sides Live. In Genesis, Three Sides Live. <laughs> Kansas, Monolith. The best of the Thompson Twins extended mixes or greatest mixes. So these are remixes of all their greatest hits. So it's not not really, you know, the album versions. It's remixed versions of the greatest hits. Really good, really good album to get. Uh, Vanilla Fudge, the beat goes on. The best of Herman's Hermits. Best of Dolly Parton. Steely Dan's Katie Lied. Led Zeppelin II. Uh, Kate Bush, The Sensual World of Kate Bush. And this was already like this. I bought this like this. I think I paid a quarter for this at the Orlando Record Show. I think I remember that's where that came from. Uh, McCartney, Paul McCartney, self-titled. Moody Blues, In Search of the Lost Chord. Some duplicate stuff. Uh, Duran Duran Arena. Bob Dylan's Slow Train a Coming. Doors, The Soft Parade. Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. Simple Minds Live in the City of Light. 
Yeah, see, it's weird. It's like the front, there's some mold on the front and it wipes off in the back. Perfectly fine, so. Hard to tell. But definitely I'd say they fared pretty well. Uh, rare Earth Ecology. Like this one, like no mold at all on it. So I, I don't know how that how that works. Kind of odd. Uh, Bob Dylan's Desire. Sticks, pieces of eight. Crosby Stills, Nash and Young, American Dream. Soft Cells, The Art of Falling Apart. English Beat, what is the English Beat? Or just the beat if you're in England. <laughs> Duran Duran, Big Thing. Not sure what this is. That's an album. Yep. Soundtrack to Easy Rider. Elton John, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Really nice copy of that. It's always a difficult one to find in good shape when you see a lot, but not when you see a, uh, in good shape a lot. Uh, Frida, something's going on in Shrink. And Frida, something's going on out of Shrink, but it's, uh, yeah, I think this is a UK or a Dutch, this is a Dutch pressing. Uh, Def Leppard, Pyromania. I think this was a VCLT gift from the teacher. If anyone remembers the teacher, he has been he's been gone for a long time, but uh, there was a VCLT from him, along with this album, The Bell Rays. Something he he really enjoyed. I, mean, I did I did spin this before I uh, put it away, and yeah, it's good good modern sort of blues rock band, soul band, soul blues kind of stuff. Good stuff. Cream, the best of cream. Hall and Oates, H2O. LL Cool J's Bigger and Deffer. Def Leppard Hysteria. Very nice copy of that. Blue Oyster Cult, On Your Feet, On Your Knees, Radio Station Promo, uh, CTI here, Don Sebesky, Giant Box, Prince's 1999, Stings, Nothing Like the Sun, uh, Phil Collins, Face Value, Mason Williams, Music, Johnny Rivers, Realizations. Really the only Johnny Winters album you need. This is his, his delve into psychedelia. Uh, very cool album. Stan Campbell, Years Go By. Williams Brothers, Two Stories. This is definitely a blind buy for me. I do not know what that is, but just interesting cover. Had to grab it. And last but not least, Three Dog Nights, Golden Biscuits. Mikey Bananas there and Grown Man Record Night went ham on this one night and ripped that off. <laughs> but yeah, there it is. So yeah, that is the first box stored in a Florida humid garage for four plus years. Um, if you want to see more of this, like I said, I have a lot more of these boxes like this. I'm going to be filling this shelf up with, with what I can and the rest will come out of boxes as I get this this shelf work through. I'm sort of going to start rotating these into my listening listening uh, sort of rotation. So get some of these records through the through the process into the collection or into the Discog store or onto other people who I think will like them. So yeah, thanks for watching this uh, this thing. I think these records fared pretty pretty well considering. Um, they don't look damaged in any way. They do need to be wiped down. But other than that, they're just like normal used records. And a lot of these were probably 
dusty and dirty before they went into the box. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you if you want to see more of these, let me know. Leave me a comment down in the show notes below and I'll, I'll put up a, a video of these unboxings every now and then as I work through these. Uh, welcome to the new house and we'll see you again real soon. Cheers.